Hi, this is Terry Van Oy, and thanks for joining me. And this is a, a challenge here for my students that are studying fractions and exponents. This was asked by one of my students, and I'm going to make a video here. It's a good example of combining lots of different concepts, about three or four concepts, actually, with exponents and even fractions. So look at what we've got here. This is the fraction one-third, and we're going to square it. So there's your exponent. And we're going to add to that the product there of one-third times one and a half. So there's your mixed number fraction, and there's a regular fraction or a proper fraction. And we have all of that combined in one question. So how do you handle that? What do you do first? Well, the first thing we want to look at is one-third squared. What does that really mean? Well, and in any ex exponent, it means repeated multiplication. So you're going to take the fraction one-third and multiply it by itself twice. That's what the two means, of course. So it's one-third times one-third. Another way to think of it is you're going to square the one on top and square the three on the bottom. That squaring part happens to both numbers. So when you multiply it together, of course, that'll be one-ninth. So let's start with that. And we'll just sort of set it off to the side and deal with it here a little bit later. All right. Now, we have a fraction times a mixed number fraction. What we have to do is we have to convert 1 and a half into a numerator and denominator. In other words, an improper fraction. So we'll do a little multiply add trick, which is kind of a shortcut. We're going to take 1 times 2 is 2 plus 1. All right. So multiply, add. That's the rule. 1 times 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. That's our numerator. Keep the same denominator, 3 over 2. And we're going to be multiplying that by 1 third. Okay? Now when we multiply those two together, it's 1 times 3 is 3. Let's write that down. And 3 times 2 is 6. All right, well, we know that 3 over 6 has a simpler name. We can reduce it to lowest terms or simplify it. And we can divide a 3 out of each term, of course, which will leave me with 1 on top and 2 on the bottom. So 1 half is just another name for 3 6. And I want to do that first so I have smaller numbers to work with. Now, of course, here's the other concept we've got to remember. We're adding fractions of unlike denominators. Okay, so... This is something you can do in your head, but I'm going to write it out and sort of space it out a little bit and show you a little technique here. For those of you that sort of struggle a little bit with unlike denominators, here's how I would show that. We need to think of a multiple of 9 and a multiple of 2 um, that are the same thing, the common one. Now 2 can't go into 9, but 2 can go into 18. All right, so we're going to multiply both of these numbers here by 2. All right, because we want to end up with 18 in the denominator. 1 times 2 and 9 times 2. And here, we're going to multiply both of these by 9. As long as they're the same number, top to bottom, that's legal. That's mathematically true. That, that can happen. So I'm going to multiply 1 times 9 and 2 times 9. What do we have now? Well, this should be 2 over 18. And we're adding to that 9 over 18. Now what we've done is what's called writing equivalent fractions. Okay, We're trying to add 1 ninth and 1 half. They have different denominators, so I rewrite them with the common denominator of 18. Okay, Obviously my last step would be to add the numerators together to give me 11. Uh, don't forget, we don't add the denom denominators. It's going to stay 18. Can we simplify it or reduce that in any way? Nope. We keep that as our final answer. All right, I hope that you followed that whole process. It's a really good mixed example of a lot of things with fractions and exponents. Thanks for watching.